this happy scientist seminar will be essentially a, a, a brief review overall of github and git essentially there's no time and there's not enough time to actually walk you through every step every th single thing that we need to do to uh, just get in general but i'll we'll just give you a glimpse and, a, and an idea and, and i have a couple of exercises there that you can either, either try to do it now or try to do it later okay and as usual we do have our feature uh happy scientist um unfortunately i was not able to find uh, a, a non-white male si uh, happy scientist <laughs> for theme related to like github or version control but i found uh, uh jerry c elliott which is a, a physicist and Asian, Nathan american who work uh, uh, at nasa uh, he has a very uh, interesting story and he he was actually a, a, a key individual in the apollo 13 mission so i invite you to take a look at it uh, at his at his prof, uh, at his history uh, it's it's on wikipedia here you have the links and uh, as usual so we do have the materials here uh we're going to be using git you can download it from this link that i have here let me just copy and paste it on on the chat chat box uh let me see if i can find it and i'm sorry if you are seeing like a, a bunch of black boxes around uh, they just made a change to zoom and in linux linux version now it shows like black boxes all over the place so okay and we will have essentially i'll, I'll just go through two two parts the very first part is going to be like an overall uh, description of version control and git in general and in the second part i'll just going to show you walk you through uh a project. I'm going to just start a random project on GitHub so you can see how it's done and later on. You can pause it in the video or, or, or ask questions in more detail. But I'll just kind of like go through it a bit, uh, a bit fast, a little bit, because I want at the end, uh, I want Paul Marjoram, who is listening right now, to tell you a little bit about his experience using GitHub and Git for classes. We used it for the PM566 class, which is for uh, the intro for data science. And it worked great. So it, it's a great way to interact with students and to upload materials. Okay. So I'll just start with the first bit. Okay. So Git, GitHub, Subversion, all of these things are related to version control. And what is version control? Well, a lot of people actually think about this as, uh, I don't know, having document one, I don't know, paper version one done. Uh, Doc X, um, paper version two, paper version two A, paper version two B, paper version two final. Well, whenever you do, you're doing that, you, you're kind of like working with version control, but in an, a little bit an or an unorganized way. So there are some technologies, Git is one of them, that allows you to that help you to manage and organize your project in an easier and better way. And the idea of Git in particular is that you essentially you have a, a path. You can see this as a tree, a directed graph, in which you have your project, which could have a lot of files, uh, source code, data files, I don't know, LaTeX files, uh, README files, and a lot of things like that. And you, as, as, as you're moving along in time, you can uh, commit changes. You are recording things that are happening to this project, this repository. The cool thing on Git is that you can essentially, you can branch out, meaning that, for example, if you are building an algorithm and you want to implement a change that might break the code, you can essentially create like a, a new branch, like go away from the project, work on the project, uh, on the new implementation there. And as soon as, and it, as, as it's working, you can then uh, merge it to the main project. And if the thing actually, the new implementation that you just made, it didn't work, then you can just continue in the, in the main branch without having touching it, which is a, a great thing. You can also add tags, for example, Whenever you're reaching a point that it's, I don't know, you have a version of your paper that it, it's well documented, you can tag it. So then you can easily go back in time if you want to check the previous versions, so on and so forth. And mostly uh, the cool thing of Git and it GitHub and other services, of course, is that you can collaborate. So in, in the case of, uh, again, for the PM566, uh, there were, we were four, in the, uh, four lecturers, uh, co-instructors co who were working together in the same set of slides in the same class and and we actually uh, used a lot github to collaborate and build the, the, the class which i think it was a very nice experience 
And why do we care? Well, there are uh, there's lots of reasons why. I, I just mentioned a few of them. So uh, a cool thing is that you can always like if you if you made a mistake, you make a change, you can always go back in time, like revert without having to like have multiple name versions of a file, for example. If you lost code, uh, I don't know, accidentally you uh, deleted a file, you can always recover it, for example. You can have multiple versions of a project, as I just as I just mentioned. You can have you can also check differences. For example, you made a new change. You I don't know. You updated a file. Now it's not working, and you want to see why. You can actually take use Git to compare two documents to see what what uh, codes of what lines are different from each other, and so on. So forth. there's a lot of reasons why it's it's a great uh, idea to use Git. And uh, uh, this is, I'm, I'm not lying with this. Uh, this is the actual name, Git, the stupid control uh, content tracker. Uh, and it's stupid because uh, it, it's great in the sense that it, it's super useful to track changes of files, but it has no idea of what it's tracking. Uh, you, you can see more about that. I, I just added a link. But the thing about Git and, and, and GitHub is that Git is the most, um, uh, is a control version control technology that is most used by developers around the world. So it's a good idea to learn it. And especially if you're thinking about like jumping into data science or in industry, uh, using Git, it'll be key for you to be more competitive. And how can, can you use Git? Well, there are several ways of using it. I'm pretty used to use it, uh, using command line tools. I just go to the terminal and start using Git. Or you can actually use RStudio. RStudio comes with a GUI that it's pretty neat for using Git. Uh, there's also another one that's called Git Cola. Uh, GitHub has its own GUI that you can take a look at for Windows also, Mac and Linux. And there are several other alternatives around. Um, and finally, before jumping into the, the second bit, the, uh, let me just tell you a little bit what, what's kind of like the, the workflow. So here are the commands that you use when you are working with Git. In general, uh, these are these like four commands are the only commands that I kind of use. You have Git init that uh, initializes a project. Git pull will uh, uh, update any changes that were done in on the cloud, for example. Git add will add any changes that you did to the project. Git commit will do exactly that. Will commit the current changes of the project, and Git push will do a, will upload the changes of the project to a remote repository if you have one. Again, what my my like common workflow will be like I don't know if, if I'm working with a project collaboratively, so I, I know there's all the other people working with it. I would just go and before starting adding changes to the documents or anything, I would first pull the changes to see if there's anything new. I will add my changes, I don't know, add new files, edit documents, so on and so forth. I will add the changes like that, and then I will just commit and push. So it's, it's kind of like this cycle. That's the way that Git works. That's like the, the common workflow. And all of these commands, you can also uh, use them uh, through the GUIs. But since there are so few, I, I think it's, it's, it's very easy to like memorize them for using it uh, through command line, OK? So that's the first, first bit. Uh, there's also, by the way, we do have a happy scientist seminar that talked about why is it a good idea to use Git? And I'm not going to go much deeper into that, but I'll share the, the previous happy scientist seminar in which uh, Emil talked about it, okay? So let me just jump into the, the second, second bit. Okay. So what we're going to be doing now is that imagine that I have a project, okay? I have a, a, a new algorithm that I just implemented. I have it right here. Uh, let me just jump to it. This is, I have it on a, as an R Markdown file. I know that a lot of you faculty and students already know are, who work with R already work with R Markdown. So what I have here is just an, a function that implements an algorithm that's that's known as um, uh, the swapping algorithm, which is using graph theory, and it's used for when you want to essentially uh, draw samples from a graph while preserving its degree sequence. Which, in other words, we can describe it as uh, an algorithm that, when you shuffle the elements in a in a um, 
in a zero or one matrix, when you're moving around the ones in this matrix, the row sums and the row column calls the, the, the are preserved. So uh, uh, any, any time that I, I generate a new uh, graph from this, a new uh, array, a new matrix with zeros and ones around, the, the row sums are the same as the original one, as, as, and, and also are the, the call sums. You'll see this uh, in, in a second. But the thing is that bottom line is that I want to take this file and upload it to GitHub so I can share it with the world. And I can actually keep track of it for myself as well. So if, for example, if I have multiple computers, I can just sync this on and on in an organized manner. Okay. So, uh, but before that, usually when you are, when you, if you just install Git on your computer, the first thing that you will need to do is config uh, Git. And it'll start by introducing yourself. So in this case, you first you have to specify your username. Uh, for example, here, uh, when I'm, I'm just going to through command line and I'm just typing, let me put this on the side. For example, if, if you're using command line, you can just type git config, config global username, and then you type your username. Here you have Juan Perez. Uh, and the same thing with the email. global uh, user email. And why do we do this? Well, because every time that you make a commit, Git keeps, keeps track of uh, like a signature of, of who did the commit. So that way, if you are working around, I don't know, if you're working with multiple people and somebody did a change, you can easily take a look at uh, who was the author of that change, okay? So once you do that, once you have, uh, you have introduced yourself to Git, uh, you, we can start a local repository, okay? So in this case, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to, through my file system. I'm going to create a new folder here uh, that's going to be named uh, my first git repo, okay? Or, or my, first, uh, my first git. Okay, so it's right here. It's a folder that I have. You can do it on whatever operating system you're using. I haven't done anything new. And what I'm going to be doing next is uh, I'm going to use Git to initialize this as a repository. So in the command line, if I go there, okay, in my case, if I go to that place, I can go CD documents, my first Git. Okay, if I just go and type git in it, I'm initializing git in this repository. Okay, so now I can start tracking changes here. That's the first step. You have to do this only once. The next step will be, uh, for example, here I'm just asking you to create a readme file, which is usually a, a, a good practice. Let me just have this side by side. So that way people, when they go into re your repository, they actually know what is this about, okay? In my case, I'm just going to um, use any, you can use any uh, tool to create plain text files. So I'm going to use, uh, I think it's, have this text editor and I'm just, sorry. going to use and this supports markdown this is a project for uh, using using git this is just a title here it goes uh, description so on and so forth and once you're done with that i'm just going to save this in the folder that i just created my first this is the one no my first git, okay. And this is going to be the readme file. Okay. So now that we have this readme file created, uh, if, you, if you take a look at the repository here and in your folder, if you type git status, you will see uh, that there are no commits yet. So we just started it. 
and there's an untracked file. So Git already recognizes that you have a file in this project that it's not tracking, okay? And to add it, it actually is already suggesting you what to use. You can just go and type git add to track it. So I can, if I go here and type git add readme, I just added the file to the repository. And if I type git status, it will tell me what's going on right now. So as you can see, once I type git status, it tells me there are no commits yet, but we do have a new file. So now the readme file is added to Git so we can start tracking it. And as I mentioned earlier on, we do have, uh, I, um, I started all this because I have this file here, this markdown file that I wanna share with my collaborators. And I'm just going to save this file into that repository, okay? So this will be, um, I don't know, I'm just going to call it algorithm.markdown, R markdown. Okay. So once again, if we take a look at Git, what's going on here, you will see, okay, there's a new file that's been added that needs to be committed. And there's now another file that is not being tracked. Okay. So what we need to do now, well, we just need to add it. Git add, uh, algorithm.r markdown. So now there you have it. So now we have a readme file and an algorithm.r markdown file. Like this, you can just, you can add, I don't know, if you have uh, LaTeX documents, if you have Stata scripts, if you have C++ scripts, so on and so forth, you can add them just like that, git add. So now that we have the initial files that we want to add to this repository, we can now committed, we can commit the changes. So I can just go here and type git commit message, and this will be my first commit, smiley face, okay? So now git is telling you what just happened. So it created a file readme in that mode uh, and then file algorithm in that mode. And this is the, the commit message my first commit, and then you also have, um, this is, I think it's, it's a hash that it uses uh, to keep track of the, the, the commits that are going on, okay? And as I suggest there, if, if I go here and type git log, we can see that we have now that commit, right? Usually this will be, uh, you will see that this is populated pretty quickly. So let me, let me just show you another phrase so you can see how it looks like. Um, here you have a C++ library that, I, that I've been working on for a year now. And if I type git log, you will see that I have a bunch of commits here. And the cool thing of this, of git, is I can actually go back in time. So for example, if I wanna check, check out a version that I have on, I don't know, February uh, 2021, I can actually go there. Uh, this is the, like the, the, the ID of this, of this commit. So if I, if I want, I can just go git check out. Uh, no, I can't show you right now because I have changes. Uh, let me, give, me, give me one second. This is what happens when you're doing like live demonstrations. Uh, okay, so if I go check out, I just move back in time in git. So now, uh, all the files, all the things that are, that are in this project are the ones that that were until I think it's February something on that day. And I can go here and like and, and see the files and explore and, and not just through command line. So if, I, if, I, if you just browse your files using your uh, whatever uh, window explorer, uh, you, you will be able to see how the files look like up to that point. And once you're done with that, you can always go back, get check out master, this is the, the name of the, like the current version. If I go there, now I'm in the master version. This is the, the, the present time, okay? Okay, so let's go back to our project. So right now we only have one commit and, it, and, and it's just that, okay? Any questions so far? 
So if not, let me just summarize what I've just done. So right now, the only things that I've done, I just created a folder that's called my first Git. It's right here, right? I have it on my documents. And I have now added two files, a readme file, which is just uh, readme in markdown format. So people can, I don't know, I have a, a description of the project here and an R markdown file, which I wanna share with my collaborators or, or with the world. And after I did that, I just used the command line, the command line tool from Git. I initialized the project right using Git init. Once you did that, uh, then I use Git add and the names of the file to add the files to the project. And finally, I use Git commit to commit the changes and like save the status of the project right now. Okay, and I haven't done any more than that. So now that, we, now that we're done with that, we can go to the um, to the solutions. So, yeah, but, and by the way, we, I, there, there are solutions here. I did uh, wrote this so that if you just go to your command line tool, you can just copy and paste this and it will work out. Okay. And now uh, let me just uh, follow up. So what happens, for example, let me let me just give you an example. Sometimes like the idea of Git is that if you you want to track anything that you can actually open in a in a text editor. So meaning that, for example, if you have a video, a video will be a bad thing to include in Git because you cannot you cannot track changes by lines, right? So it, it's a binary file. Anything that is a binary file, you don't want to add it. So let's imagine that just by mistake, for example, I I, I copied. I don't know. Do I have something here that I can show? I copy a, a PDF file, okay? Let's imagine that you you have a paper that you added here, a PDF, and, and you add it by mistake, git add. So now you can see we have a new file, but oops, we didn't want it to add that because it's a binary file and we didn't want to track it. So in order to remove that, you can just go and type git remove cache. This is an important option. And I tell you why, and then the name, the name of the file. Once I do this, uh, if I check the status again, git status, you will see that the file is still there and it's not being tracked. The, the, the catch option is just telling Git that I want to remove this file uh, from the tracking system, but I don't want to remove this file from the computer. If I, if I go there and type uh, git remove without the catch option, it will have removed the file from the computer uh, entirely. And we don't want that. So that, that's why important. That, that's why that's important. And if, for example, if I don't want to keep files like this uh, hanging around, what you need to do is that you, you can use what's called a, a git ignore file, git ignore file that tells git things that you don't want to track. So for example, if I, if I just go, let me, let me write down one on the, on the fly. So now I, I want to tell Git that I want to skip all the files that, start with, that end with a PDF. The status, this should work. And now, as you can see, now that I type Git status, this file is no longer showing, right? But now we have this new file, git ignore, which is a plain text file that tells git again what things you don't want to track. So uh, I just want to make sure that I want to keep this in the project as well so we can add it. Git add that git ignore. So George, just a quickie. So we're not tracking it for changes and, and line by line changes, but can binary files live inside your project such that when a person pulls they will also get the binary file either you can still do so uh it, it's it's i do actually do so uh, if you have for example a small binary file that that you need that has some data you can do so and, and people uh, does share like files that are in the sizes of i don't know uh half of a gig you can still have that but this is not made for like tracking changes in a binary file so every time that you like, I don't know, made an update on the binary file, it will keep like a, a, an, an entire copy of the new binary file, which is not ideal, right? And it won't show you any differences because a Git cannot see what, what are the right. differences between binary files. Right. Whereas if you're looking, if you're, I don't know, changing things on a plain text file, 
you will tell you exactly what are the lines that just change. Sure, I understand. Yeah, I understand. And, and a good practice that I usually do is that, for example, if you have a relatively large data set, I always add just a placeholder. I may I may add, for example, in the readme file, I will I might describe that, for example, I don't know, in in this project for to to work, you actually need uh, this data set that is a binary file, and you can download from here. Okay. And I give outside, instructions outside that, the outside the trunk or outside the structure. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that, that's what I do gotcha. to Thank keep you. it minimal. So, um, so yeah, that, that, that's a great question. Okay. Thank you, Rich. Uh, so now again, so going back, what just happened? So uh, I just show you how to remove a file that you're tracking a binary file. If you don't want to track it, you can remove it using the, the function, the, the command um, git remove. Okay, git remove cache as I as I just showed you as it's shown here, and I also added the git ignore file will which will help me uh, which will help git keeping track of uh, essentially knowing what things it needs to track or not. So anything that it's added in, in here won't show up anymore uh, as in the list of untracked files, which could be a blessing, right? So for example, you may you may have a project that has a ton of 10 files that you, you are not interested in on, on saving at all. But every time that you, you go here and I don't know, type uh, git status uh, in, the, in the list of untracked files, it will show every time those files that you don't, you don't want to track. So in order to avoid that, you can just go and uh, add them to the git ignore file. And there are some details here. So you can actually add patterns and all sorts of stuff of files. <clears throat> so now that we have here uh, this, let me just add the commit again. Git commit message added the git ignore ignore file. See, so now if I type git status again, nothing to commit. Working on the tree clean. So it now it now it's uh, we just added the file, and if I if I type git log, we should now see um, two two commits. See. Let me just type it again so you can see it here. We have the first commit and we have uh, the current commit, right? Well, let me just uh, uh, quickly show you what happens if I go back in time. Um, let me, I wanna see how can I, sorry. Um, so yeah, so, so since the git ignore file, it starts with a dot in, in my operating system, it will just hide it. So this is the file that I just added, right? So now if, if I want to go to the past, as I, as I told you before, so let me, let me, if I just go here and type git checkout, so you can see what happens. And the name of this commit, the ID, the readme file disappears. And why is that? Because we are in, a, in, a, in the in a starting place of the project in, in which the git ignore file was not there. And if I want to go back in time, uh, sorry, and if I go to move to the present, we can always go just here and type git uh, checkout master. And now we are back, see? So that's a pretty neat feature uh, in, in my opinion, at least. So now that we have that, uh, uh, this is what happens. So let me just show you uh, uh, briefly what happens if I modify the file. So for example, here, uh, this is the markdown file. Okay, and let me, I don't know, I'm, I'm just going to, I have a typo here, so I'm just going to add this. Okay, this is the, the algorithm that our markdown file that we have that I just added. Let me save it. So now it's change. And what happens with it? Let me show you. If I go here and type git status, you will see that it's tracking that the algorithm that our markdown file was modified, right? But what's uh, what's What's cooler than that is that you can actually see exactly what, what changed. So you can, if you go and type git diff, just like that, you will be able to see what happened. So here's the recording. There was one deletion and one addition. So the red line is telling you, so this, this line was deleted and this one was added. So essentially I'm, I just have this extra M here. And for every change that you, get, that you add, Git will be able to keep track of it like that. So then, whatever, whenever in the past, in uh, uh, if one one of your collaborators, for example, make makes a change in the project, you can always see exactly which bits he changed. 
right? So that, that's the cool thing. So let me just commit this. Get commit. Uh, first, let me add it. Uh, and then git commit. So I'm, I'm here, I'm just adding the changes. That's why I'm typing add. Uh, typo, okay? And I don't, I'm not sure if I wrote typo correctly, but I think that's fine. <laughs> so now you can see one file change, one insertion, one deletion, which is what I just showed you. And if I go and type uh, git log, now we have here, we have three commits now. So now the project starts like to have like more changes and we can always keep track of this and go back in the past, which is the cool thing, okay, about Git. But uh, this is not very useful if you're just using it for a local repository. So you can still do it like that. But it's, uh, when it's very powerful is when you're using remote repositories, you can sync it online. So what I'm going to be doing next is I'm, I'm just going to take this and take it to my uh, you and use GitHub uh, to sync it online. Okay. And how do we do that? Well, you first need to have a, a GitHub account, uh, right? Uh, uh, when you have your GitHub account, for example, here on, let me show you. Um, I'm not going to show you how, how that's done. You just go to github.com and create an account. Uh, and once you have your account, you can go here and create new repositories using either this button here or going up here and adding the, the, the plus with the plus sign. So for example, I'm just going to create this new repository uh, in my account that we want to be called my first Git. So it's available and you can choose whether you want to make it public or private by, by default it's pin as public. But if, for example, if you're working with data that um, is um, not to be shared with the world, you can always keep it private and just use it for yourself. And if you have collaborators, you have you can add the collaborators to the projects and they can also see the data if it is private, okay? And Git is just giving you a, a, some other op extra options, GitHub, so you can uh, add a description that's optional and you can add a readme file the, the, the default, but we already have one, so I'm not going to do that. Add the Git ignore and, or choose a license, but I'm, not, I'm going to skip that for now. I'm going to create the repository. So now that it's done, Git, it's already showing you how you, you can actually start working with this um, GitHub. So for example, here is, it's giving you what are the instructions that I'm, I'm about to follow. So now that I have this repository online, I want to sync it with my local repository, right? And the way to do that is that we, we go and either using, I don't know, HTTPS, that this address or this other address, it will depend on your configuration. In my case, I'm going to use the SSH because I, I have set up uh, GitHub so we can use, uh, I can use my uh, SSH connections. But if you just started using GitHub and, and your account is brand new, you should go with uh, HTTPS, okay? But I'm just going to do this for now, okay? And the instructions are, oops, sorry. So first we need to, I'm already in the, in the project folder, right? So I need to add, the remote repository so git knows where to push the changes and pull the changes so the way to do this is just, you just go and type git uh, remote add and the name of the remote repository is going to be called origin okay and in my case again uh, i use ssh so uh, instead of using https as the, the address of it uh, i use a different setup this uh, git uh, at github.com slash sorry gigayon slash my first git that git okay so i just added the remote repository okay and once that's done and once you you don't have any changes to uh, be committed you can actually uh, make your first push so actually it's synced with the remote repository and how do we do that? Well, we just type git push u, uh, which is a shortcut for upstream origin master. Okay. So once I do that, it will probably ask you for your password or your username if, if, if you haven't set up the SSH just yet. In my case, I have SSH, so it, it doesn't ask me for that. So uh, I'll, I'll just type that and it's going to sync automatically with the remote repository. As you can see, it's giving some information here, how many objects it has, um, 
the, the new, there's a new branch, the master branch. And now this is sync with the remote repository. So if I go to GitHub, back to GitHub again, let me just check out. Uh, this, this is the way that the repository looked before, right? So it's, it's empty right now. I don't have anything. This is just instructions that uh, GitHub is giving me so I can start. But since I already synced this, if I refresh the website, you will see that now we have this. So now everything is online. And furthermore, Git is showing you like a, what, what was it like the, the commit associated with this file. So for example, I added the readme.md 18 minutes ago, the algorithm that are marked down five minutes ago, so on and so forth. You can actually take a look at all the commits, the history like that. And, and it's really cool because you can, you can check, see uh, the changes. They have like this, see? So it, Git is telling me that the thing that changed in this commit was just this file. And in particular, I added this M. And it's really cool because, for example, imagine that I'm um, a different person. Uh, so you can uh, actually uh, add comments to the commit messages. You can either add a comment overall, right? Or you can actually go more precisely and just add a, a single comment per line. So for example, in this case, uh, I want to just thank myself. Uh, thank you. And you can actually mention users here. If you tag users, GitHub will send a notification to that user that somebody tagged him or her in this commit. Thank you, George Pegayan, for fixing this, right? And you can add the comment. And you can actually start a discussion there. So that, that's why what, uh, GitHub is so great, because you can actually, it, it's really, really nice to, uh, to work with other people, okay. So that's done. That's that's the the changes here. Um, but all those back. comments, just sorry, just real quick, uh -huh. all those comments you're adding through GitHub, the online version, or that they would not be included in a command line pull or, a, or whatever the right sync. That's right. That's right. This is a feature only of GitHub. Yep. 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 Okay. Thanks. GitHub has this, but the Git, which is different from GitHub. Uh, does not allow uh, does not allow for this, um, uh, but but it, either way. So uh, okay, so let me let me go here and, and if I go again. So this is the the website. You you can actually check it live if you want. Let me let me just share it with you so you can go there if you if you wanna like I don't know mess with it. Just add it to the chat. You can go there. So uh, and this is another thing. So you might not work that much with GitHub, but you, for example, you might be working with a student or, or some other faculty that has a, a, a repository and you, you notice that they, they missed something, for example, right? GitHub allows you to make edits online without having to use all the like command line tools like git commit, git add, whatever. So for example, in this case, I imagine that I, would, I just want to edit the, the, again, the algorithm that are markdown file. Um, and I want, I don't know, let me just, uh, if, if I go here and click here, uh, that, that pen, you can, you can make the edits directly. For example, I, I don't know, I'm just going to add a, a line here that says definition of the algorithm. Okay. So I added that, um, and you can, uh, you can add a message if you want. I don't know. I just wanted to make it more verbose. And, and that's it. Commit changes, for example. If I do that, I just made another commit using the GitHub, um, the GitHub GUI. It's online, right? But now, what's the problem? The problem is that I just made this change online, but this is not updated in my local repository. Right, so if I if I go here and type uh, git status, okay, let me see. Uh, it says uh, you're up to date, but um, let me see. But I want to actually pull the changes that I just made. Right, so if it, if you take a look at the file, I just changed this. It, this is the algorithm that are markdown file, right? Uh, and if I just go here and type git pull, it will go to the remote repository and fetch, fetch any changes that have happened. 
So let's just wait a, a second, a few seconds for this. So for example, I, I actually have done this with Paul Marjoram. Uh, 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 we were working on a Markdown file and he, uh, he will just go there and edit the Markdown file directly uh, using GitHub, which is really cool. So he didn't even need to like download Git on, on his computer or work with it directly. So it, it was great. And even so though, now, you can, even though, like for example, I, I logged in on that on your URL, but even though I'm logged in, I don't see the comments or the ability to add because I'm not technically invited as part of this development. Exactly. Team, right? you, okay. Because I went, I was trying to find a comment. I was going to write you a funny note, but I can't do it. Right. Even though I'm <laughs> authenticated, I'm not. Paul and you don't don't let me in the door yet. Okay. Right. Cool. No, and as you can see now here, uh, it, it's showing you that it pulled some changes, right? So the algorithm that I marked down file had uh, one insertion and one deletion. And if I go back to this file, now it's showing up. This is the change that I just did online. And as you can imagine, you can do this like on and on forever. Uh, and just out of curiosity, I, I'm, I'm guessing that you, some of you are like, uh, want to know what, what, is, what this thing does. So just let me show you. Um, so here I have a graph. I just run this function that samples from a graph. This is an agency matrix uh, sample graph X. If I just, if I type this command, uh, this will just uh, move around the edges so that the row sums and the row uh, and the call sums are the same. That's all that it does. And let me just compile this so you can, oh, actually it's, it's already there. If, if you go, if you go back to the, if you go back uh, to the top, you can see the render version of the of the readme of the of this file of this file here this is what it creates uh, it's an algorithm i'm just checking some of the properties you can we can talk about that later uh, one on one if you want uh, but let me just go back to this okay so what we've done uh, I, I here by the way here are the step by step um, i took pictures of how you can see how how it's done and so, uh, and that, that's pretty much it for this. So again, so uh, what we have done today, uh, we created a local repository, right? I added some files that I wanna share with my collaborators, uh, including a readme file uh, and an algorithm file, which has like, the, it's, it's the, main, the, the core thing of this thing. And then I created, a, in my GitHub account, I created a, a remote repository, right? So uh, I added it, um, using git remote at origin and I type the URL of the repository. And then I use git push origin master to up, update uh, the changes that I, I made on this repository. Right? Um, and I also show you how can you go online here in, in GitHub and directly make changes here and, and submit changes. And how can you then uh, in your local repository update your local repository using git poll okay and, and and that's it and for the final part uh, i'm not going to do this but i have an exercise for you if you're interested if you go to part three uh this is one of the main th ways in which uh, how collaborators uh, how people collaborate using github if you i don't know if you check out the r community they are like super uh, active and a lot of times you will see that people go uh, and check uh, other people's packages and actually uh, make them better by, by su suggesting changes. And the way that that works out is you see in pull requests. Uh, and a pull request is a tool that is included on GitHub. It's not part of Git, but GitHub that allows you to go copy someone else's repository, make changes, and, pro and propose these new changes to the owner of the repository. So for example, Rich just mentioned that he cannot make any changes right now because he's not uh, allowed to make changes. He's not part of the project that I just made, but you could in principle go there and, and uh, make a fork, which it'll, it'll simply just, you just need to go here and click here fork, and it will create a copy for yourself so that, you can, that you can edit and afterwards submit the changes by, uh, through GitHub. Is fork synonymous with branch? No, that's that's okay. a good question. So okay. branch is essentially uh, when you when you split the project at, at some point in time. So you can again, so you can branch it out. You want to take uh, uh, you can you want to try a new version of your algorithm, for example. You can branch it out and start working on it right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So if you and Paul were you were talking about using it in a, a in a development process, would would you guys branch your versions of stuff you're working on and then put them back together, or would you just um, update oh, directly? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You kind of yeah. Usually, uh, I only I only use I only branch out a project. If I'm introducing like a very big change, oh, okay, all right. If it's something that might break the code, and more certainly, oh. I just go and add it. If it's if it is an incremental change, I just do it directly. Mm -hmm. And yeah, even though I have I have like added a lot of commits with very minor minor changes right now, the way I do it uh, with my projects, and by the way, I use uh, for every, all of the projects that I'm working on, I use GitHub. Uh, I will just I don't know every 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 now and then every few hours I will just make a commit and I'll make sure that it's sync online. So in case that if my I don't know my 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 son one of my sons one of my kids come to my computer and delete something it's already backed up yeah. uh, online. But it, if, and but I, if... and it's different from Dropbox right because Dropbox is like automatically and continuously backing up, but uh, GitHub uh, and Git is like a, you are you are conscious about what things you're backing up at a one point in time. But if you were working with Paul, would you commit? Would you both commit to the same project? Or I'm still I'm sorry for these weird. Yeah, but... you you can do that. You can do yeah. that. So if you if 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 it was part of the project here, he will he can commit directly to the same project. I see. Okay. Cool. Uh, yeah. So I invite you to go to this bit, uh, and essentially I have this uh, GitHub repository that I just created for you to try it on. Uh, that's called uh, Who Am I. So I'm just suggesting that you can come here, fork this repository, and add a new line, uh, adding your profile. So for example, in my case here, I, I added myself, uh, uh, my username on GitHub, a link, and a picture. And we did this with uh, 5, 566. So let me show you PM 566. I think that's the, the address. No, give me one second. So you can see what's, what's the output. Uh, So I just want to leave a few minutes so can Paul can tell you a little bit about what his experience. Yeah. So here I have, so this is like the expected output. So I, I just want you to try it out. If you have time, you can ask me questions later on. But here, each one of these lines was edited by a single student, a different student. And they added their own like uh, profiles here and some added like some pictures and added like, a I don't know, here we have, uh, these are the instructors for the data science class. We, we had Emil, Abigail, uh, Professor Franklin. Uh, and, and we did all of this using pull requests. So it was very collaborative. collaborative. If, you, if you can see here, you can see all the contributors. Uh, this repository, we have 28 people working on it, uh, which is pretty cool, I think, okay? So that's it. And I just want to give uh, Paul Madron a, a few minutes so he can talk about his experience using GitHub. Let me let me start sh stop sharing. Thank you, Georgia. Yeah, let me start sharing. And while I'm doing that, let me apologize to Rich for the fact that you and I haven't invited him to our organization yet. We're a very exclusive organization, um, <laughs> and we have a secret handshake. And because of COVID, we can't teach you the secret handshake you yet. Go. But you once go. you can produce a vaccination certificate, you'll be welcome to uh, learn the handshake and join us. So um, yeah, I just thought I'd give a 10-minute tour, mostly for the faculty of how I use this or have been using it for one of the courses I teach, 520, the stats computing course. Um, and I want to start on this page, which is GitHub Classroom, so classroom.github.com, um, because this is a tool I use. You don't have to use it. They don't use it for 566, I believe. Uh, but it just makes it the logistics of setting up the repos for the students a little bit easier. So I create a new classroom every year. You can do it. Well, you have to create a new classroom every year. I do a new organization every year as well. But, um, so that on the right is last year, and this on the left is this year and I just create this year's one by forking out last year so copying it over every time so if we go in there we'll see inside it there's a bunch of assignments I've created using this new assignment button um, and what's particularly nice about github classroom is that for each assignment it creates a little link that you can cut and paste and then share it with the students so I do it I've learned to do it on dropbox or sorry on blackboard's announcements page so that there's a permanent record for students that missed the email but those are the invitations I sent out for um, last week, my week count was out because we teach on a Monday, so we skip a couple of weeks. These are the ones for the week before. So when the students click on these links, they'll set up their own versions of these repositories. So now let me show you what they're actually copying. So everything else happens on GitHub itself. So this is the organization for 520 in 2001. 
Um, there are somewhere 631 repositories. That's one of the features of GitHub is that there's a repository, every time I create a repository, there's one here. And then every time a student copies it, they have a copy in here as well. So the number of repositories goes up very rapidly. And one of the downsides of GitHub is there's no real way to organize those. You have to be very careful. At least I find it's easiest to, to name them very carefully. And then you can find, if I want to find everything to do with week three, I can just search for week three, for example, and it will just show me all of those. And if I only want to see mine, I don't want to see the student versions, then I can just change it to public and then it will just show me the public ones for week three. So these are the things I created. Week three was a busy week. There was a lot going on. Um, the point of GitHub Classroom is that when the students copy it, so let me go back to the view where you see everything. When the students copy it, the versions they create are private to them. And, and I'm allowed to see them because I'm the instructor and TAs are allowed to see them as well. Um, this is per US law, I believe, that we're not allowed to force them to make public repositories. So it just handles that side of things automatically and automatically gives me access. I won't click on, click on them because they're private, um, but it allows me to click in there and see what they're up to. So when they're ready and they've uploaded their solutions to assignments or what have you, I can then go in or the TA can go in and grade them and either give feedback by creating issues for those repositories or we've actually been doing it via Blackboard this semester, but I think actually it makes more sense to do it directly on GitHub. So then let me show you what, what we actually do. So just each week I create a number of or well, last year, I created a number of repositories for the things I wanted to do that week. So this is the third assignment, which went out this week. Um, I always create a README file. Well, I, I don't say always. Ideally, I would always create a README file to describe what the problem is. I don't think I've been very consistent with that. But ideally, the README file says, this is just a repeat of material that was delivered in class. What are you supposed to be doing in this assignment? And then these are the files that you need to complete this assignment or exercise. So here, there was a bit of arm output and code. Um, they have an exercise where they're trying to break a code, so they've got coded messages and some information to let them code it, uh, decode it. Um, so they'll work on their local copy of this. They will then um, push their solution back to um, GitHub. And I actually, because of the way Classroom works, I will automatically get a message when they do that. But if they add a little issue or a commit message with my ID in it, then I'll get um, an email from GitHub saying, hey, there's something to go and look at. Now, when you've got a large class, you get so many of these emails that you end up ignoring them. Um, but it does mean that you can just go back to um, the main GitHub page and see what's been uploaded when. These things are always just listed in order of recent, how recently they changed. Um, and it's really that simple. I mean, if, to create a repository, it's just this, you hit this new button and then you upload the files you want to upload. I never use come online. I do everything through GitHub. Um, sometimes through our studio, but you can literally just do everything through GitHub itself. Um, in order to get the information across to students, I send them this stuff beforehand, which is just general information about how to um, download R in our studio because we use that all the time, and then to create an account on Git. And I believe I borrowed this from Kim, who used was the first one I think of us to use GitHub for a course a couple of years ago. So this is just material to get them. Um, to create the accounts that they need. And then I just send them this hello world exercise, much like the thing George showed. I get to do each of them to do their own. So they get a nursery rhyme, they have to fill out the next two lines, either by doing it directly on GitHub, because that's the easiest thing, or, or and by doing it through our studio, which actually, if you're writing code, is a much better way to handle things. And it's pretty straightforward. Um, so that's how I make sure everybody gets up to speed. And actually, this year it went pretty smoothly. I don't think we really had any problems this year, uh, getting people up to speed. Um, what else could I show you? Just notes on um, GitHub. Oh, before I do that, I just discovered today when I was updating, GitHub has created a starter course. I haven't looked at this carefully because I've just discovered it this morning, that you can potentially give students as an exercise to help them get up to speed on GitHub. So that might replace uh, and be better than some of the material I have created to do that. Um, but uh, the stuff that's on here has worked fine in the two years that I've used it. And I'm happy, this is all public, so I'll share the link. I mean, you can see it up there, but I'll put the link in the chat window. You're welcome to uh, beg, borrow, and steal any of, any of it. Um, so these are just my notes on GitHub Classroom, stroke GitHub. Um, I, the, the documentation a year ago, at least, was pretty lacking. Um, so I found a nice description by someone, I think in Scandinavia, if I remember right, who'd been using it. Um, so this was his sort of introduction to that. And then he had written, separate introductions for teachers and students. 
at this point, I don't remember exactly what's in there, but reading these three documents was enough to get me up and running in the GitHub classroom. Um, and the point of it is that it makes it easy to set up the uh, repositories for the students. Just other things I was, as I was sort of collating my thoughts this week, um, as I've already mentioned, I share the invitations through Blackboard just so that there's a permanent record of them. They can go and look up if they miss them. Um, if you set things up to be public, and I do, then students can fork in any way they want. So they can create their own cloned versions if they rather do that. Um, but when they do it using GitHub Classroom, it has the property that you'll be able to access those. Um, it won't matter whether they've made them private or public, they're just set to be private by default, but to allow the instructor and the TA to have access. If they create an issue, I'll get a notification. It does depend on how you've got your GitHub preferences set up, but I, I don't think I've changed mine. So I think that's probably the default. Um, if they commit other messages, I think they need to include your ID. I still haven't um, quite established that. George might know the answer to that question. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's, that's how you yeah. do it. So if they include your ID, then you get, again, if you've set your preferences up that way, I get an email telling me that there's something to go and look at. Uh, my experience is that inevitably in the first couple of weeks, You'll get the odd student who says, I uploaded my assignment, but I can't, the, the instructor can't see it. And that's always been, so far been because they've cloned the directory manually, worked on that, and then pushed the answer back to their clone of the directory or the, their fork, however they've done it, of the directory on GitHub. But I can't see it until they ask me to pull it back and they, they haven't done that step. GitHub Classroom avoids the need to do that, which is one of the reasons. Um, I like it. So if you do find a student who says I uploaded it and, and you can't see what they uploaded, 99% of the time, that's going to be what happened. And then the, the only significant drawback of GitHub Classroom, and it's not even a significant drawback, is the number of repositories. You can see I already have 630 there. If you've got N students and you use M repositories, you know, which is probably of the order of something like 50 over a semester, that number gets very high very quickly. So unless you name the repositories carefully, so I always use week n dot whatever the name is of the repo for that week. Um, it can be a little tough to find things. So that's the one thing I wish GitHub would do, um, but that it doesn't do. Um, I like it over Blackboard. Um, it's not night and day, I think it's better, um, but primarily why I like it is because it's a useful skill once you leave USC. Um, mm -hmm. Teaching a student how to use Blackboard is not something that's gonna help them once they've <laughs> left USC. Whereas learning to use GitHub through the course of this or other courses like it is a useful skill that they can take with them. And then the flip side of that is it's a useful skill for me as well, because I didn't know much about GitHub until I started doing this and working with George. And it just forces me to get better at GitHub before I retire and never use it again. But it's a useful skill for me to learn as well. So overall, I'm, I'm very positive about it. It's not a panacea, but um, I've been very happy with the way it works so far. So I'll stick the um, page for this organization into the chat window, so you're welcome to borrow any of it. The place to go and look is these, you can pin six repositories to the top, things that you wanna be easily findable. So all the particularly useful stuff is at the top there. Um, yeah, and if you're stuff. running, sorry, Paul, and if you're running oh. a lab, it, it is great to have GitHub because that way your uh, the funders will see how active is your lab. So Paul, if you can uh, go and uh, visit um, USC Biostats. Um, yeah, how do I find that quickly? I might have it up here. Yeah, no, no. So it's uh oh yeah, yeah there you go. Your organizations. Uh, yeah. yeah, USC Biostats has a lot of things uh, going on. We have a lot of people. We have a lot of repositories, public repositories, with code for reproducing papers, uh, R packages, uh, various softwares and stuff. So, uh, so that's that's a clear indicator of of, of like people doing things. So these cool little green lines just track usage and upload and download essentially yeah. so you can see which ones. I mean, they're good when they show noise, not so much when they're flat <laughs> lines. <laughs> but these two, to be fair, have only just been created. <laughs> um, Paul, on the student ones, can the students share their repositories between themselves or it's only between you and TAs and TAs? By default, it's just me and the TAs. Okay. Um, I assume they could make it public if they wanted to. I haven't actually tested that. Um, but uh, you, or, tr nor, normally you can change the access to your repository to be private or public as you wish. So I don't see why they wouldn't be able to do that. Unless yeah, we, we, on, on PM566, we did have one student that uh, kept uh, the repository private. So only the, the, the TAs and the instructors were able to see it. Uh, and it worked, it worked just fine. Most of the other students like, keep everything public. And that's great because when you're looking for jobs, people can actually see what repositories you have and how much activity you have in GitHub. 
Okay, so that's is an indicator of actually whether you know how to use it or not. So if you if you put in your resume that you know how to use Git, but there's nothing on GitHub or in whatever other tools that are out there, uh, then what's the point, right? So, yeah. George, if you do not use Classroom and do it the way you did it in the 566 and they manually clone, do they have to invite you to the repository or the organization of the repository if it's private? And yeah. second part yeah. of the question it, is it, when when it's ready to grade, do they have to send you a message? Otherwise, you don't know, presumably. They have to, they have to invite you directly. Yeah. Okay. So it removes uh, yeah. some Otherwise of that, they won't um, they won't get the grade. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, there's every incentive to do that. So I think that ends our tour, doesn't it, George? Yeah, so we're pretty much done. We went up above the other hour a little bit. We started late though. So but if you if you have any other question, just let us know. Um I don't know. So uh, and I'm happy to answer any emails if, if you if you wanna wanna ask something or wanna share something. All right, so thanks very much, everybody. Apologies for slightly Thank overrunning. You, really. And really we'll see you all next week. See ya. Bye. Bye.